So uh, I didn't think I'd have such a large audience at the end of the day, so thanks for hanging around. Appreciate it. Hope you've had a great day. Um, so one end of the spectrum to the other, I guess, from the PMC to the YICS. Uh, so it's a role I'm very passionate about helping young people, as is my wife, Nikki. Uh, if there's a baby crying later on, apologies, it's my son. He'll be uh, booing me off stage in his own way. But um, look, we've just assumed this role only a month ago, but we're, we're very excited with uh, where this can go. And uh, like I said, my passion really is helping those younger people get into the market and be able to do what we've been able to do um, through learning through the property club and, and their ways, making our own mistakes as well and the opportunity to be able to help uh, those people moving forward is, uh, is uh, really exciting. So I'd like to thank you guys for giving us the opportunity of, of doing that. So uh, just before I get into the presentation, we've got a young investor stand out there. Uh, so we're doing a lint chocolate giveaway. So there's not many in here who don't like lint chocolate. We're just asking for a quick survey, how we can help, uh, help increase our um, uh, and, and increase our uh, benefits to the young investors. So we're just requiring some feedback and maybe giving us some names of people who you think will benefit from the Young Investors Club and you'll go in the draw to win some lovely lint chocolate. And the Yigs were also running the rugby tipping comp as well this year. So uh, half the proceeds go to Club Cares. And uh, so if you want to register for that, please come and see us. Now, you've missed a couple of games, but you will get the away team, so you're probably doing better than uh, half the people in the comp already. So please see us for that one. So I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to side with the older generation a little bit. Um, and look, a big thing I see, perceived problem out in the public, is young investors think they need a lot of money. Can't afford it, can't get into the market, we're never going to be able to afford our own property, we're just going to rent the rest of our lives. Um, you know, prices have just moved up too much, we'll never be able to afford it. And uh, I don't think that's true, and I'm going to show you why. So I think this is the real problem. When they're at that moment in their life, when they're ready to move out, you know, 18, 20, 21, their parents are living in a house like this. They're at the top level of their earning potential. Their mortgage is reduced. They're living the life. They're going on holidays. But their parents have worked very hard to get to that stage. Okay, so they've been working for 30, 40 years. They're comfortable. But, um, you know, and the kids see that and they think, I want that, I want that now. I want the $800,000 house on the quarter acre block. And, uh, you know, they say, look, the prices like in Sydney and Melbourne, we're never gonna be able to afford that. So they use that as an excuse. But uh, I think they need to be a bit more realistic in how they get to that. So similar to what myself and my wife have done, we bought four investment properties before we could get to this stage but it was a way of us getting into the market. We worked hard to get there too, so I used to work three or four jobs. We were just on average incomes. I was a landscape by trade. Nikki was a personal assistant. And um, we couldn't afford the house we're in now unless we'd done the hard yards, but started off low and built our way up to there. So I think it's a lot to do with mindset with the younger people these days. Um, they, can't, they can't really think they can afford a property like that, and they can't, but they need to build their way up to that. And I think the media plays a bit of a role in this too. Um, so you'll always hear on the news that, you know, price out of the market, owner occupiers, young people, they'll never get ahead. Um, that may be true, looking at that dream property we just saw back on the previous slide, but they need to build their way up to that. And they're not property educated either. So that's what we're really here to do as well. Um, as part of the Young Investors Club, we're all been there, done that, learned the tricks along the way. So I want to be able to show those young people um, how they can get in the position to be able to get to that, you know, the Australian dream, owning their own house. But uh, might not be the first first property they do. They might need to accumulate properties to get to that point. So I'm going to show you now how these young people can get into a property for less than ten thousand dollars. Who's interested in hearing about that? Good. So here's my answer. And I've done this with many members over here. So I'm based in Queensland. I've got members in other states. Um, now come see us on the stand as well because I've got a little printout of how government rebates, stamp duty concessions work. But I'm gonna give you a little example here from a Queensland member. Now these are numbers we just ran yesterday. So it's all current. It's exactly how it would look. 
So we're going to look at a purchase price of 350000 Okay, we're not looking at 700000 we're looking at 350000 Might be a one better in say Nanda or something in Queensland like that. A realistic purchase price. And, um, and the difficult thing can be to get to this point. So that's where the Young Investors Club can help that mindset of the younger person get to that stage where, okay, this is what I need to do and it is achievable. So let's take a purchase price here of 350000 as they're buying as an owner-occupier, as you'd know, you can get a high LVR, loan-to-value ratio. Typically, when you're buying as an investor, 90% nowadays is all you can do. Buying as an owner-occupier, you can leverage higher if the bank sit as less of a risk, and it means you need less money at the end of the day to go ahead with the purchase. So they've got the ability there to borrow more of the loan. On top of that, though, you've got other fees, okay, so your stamp duty, your legals, you can't avoid paying those, you need to pay those, everyone does. So the total for that property price, just under 370000 But here's the trip. So the loan is 340000 so you're left with a shortfall of 30000 Okay, so 30000 on a basic income, okay, that might take the young people quite a while to save up and that sort of thing. Let's have a look. Gee, that didn't show up too well. Who chose that colour? I'll blame the wife for that one. She's put her hand up. Thank you. What it does say is first homeowners grant rebate. So like I said, this is a Queensland example. Every state's a little bit different. But over here at the moment, it's $20,000. Now, you've got to be purchasing the correct type of property, okay? So it needs to be new. Um, it can't have been tenanted. You know, so these are things you need to look out for. But that says $20,000. From there you get a stamp duty rebate as well. So you get the full stamp duty back on the investment loan. Over here on this example, it's $3,500. So they did have to settle with $27,500, but now they've got the rebate and the stamp duty rebate, $4,000. So they've got into an asset worth $350,000 with only $4,000 to complete. Now I've had members who have needed less than this. It's worked out being $1,000. Now granted, to get the loan approved, you will need to have, and the brokers can verify this, normally 5% genuine savings, sitting in their account for three months. Bank of mum and dad might be able to lend them that money for the three months, sits in their account for that time. Once the property settles, they can pay them back the 20,000 first homeowners grant and the stamp duty rebate. Thanks, mum and dad, I've got a property, I'm in there for $4,000. So what they need to do, obviously, you know, they can't then just um, let people move in there straight away and it becomes an investment. What they do is they move in there for 12 months. They need to be in there for six months for the stamp duty, for the first homeowner's grant, 12 months for the stamp duty. They then move out of the property and it becomes an investment property. So then all of a sudden, all their loan costs and that that they've paid, that's now it becomes a tax deduction. They've got the rental income. They've moved out. They've got one property under their belt. It's cost them $4,000. So I had a young guy just recently do this. 21 year old engineer, just graduated. Not a massive income, 55,000. Bought a property similar price here. Cost him about $1,000 all up. He's now moved out. He's gone on a holiday for six months around Europe. But he wanted to do this before securing a property. I said, no. I said, you've got the potential to do something there. Life gets in the way. Let's get this in the pocket, get a property under your belt, go travel, live life after that. But he's now got an asset, an appreciating asset worth $350,000, and it's cost him two grand. I mean, it's a no-brainer. So from here, so let's say he did have the 30000 saved up. He's now got that money in his account to go again. Okay, so after he's moved out, he can now purchase another property using those funds. Granted, he won't be able to get the rebate, but he's in a great position. So this is a, you know, one of the examples. Every state's a little bit different. New South Wales, very similar. But it is important then to know what sort of property to look at. So for this example here, to get that sort of a loan, I needed to find this young person something with less than eight in the complex, no lift in there, to make sure they could leverage that sort of um, amount of money. So this is all information. I never had it when I was young either. You know, so I bought the wrong property. 
Well, I didn't get to claim all these rebates, I had to come up with cash. But this is where I want to be able to help the young people um, learn from our mistakes and better ed educate them about how they can get into the market. So, as we can see, I think the big problem, or well, one of the main problems, is they see their mum and dad. When they want to move out, that's the lifestyle they want straight away. You've got to build up to that. And this is a great way to help you build up to that point. Okay, nice and short and sharp, but um, please come us and find us at the Young Investors Club stand. Um, like I said, that was just one very short snapshot look at how you can uh, get into the market for, for very cheap. There's plenty of other strategies that we use, but that's just one I wanted to cover today. And uh, please come and find us, book in your NRL tipping, and uh, come win some chocolate. So thanks for staying around, guys. Really appreciate it.